and some of the some of the key points so uh, you can read into them and the pinworm eggs are the only parasite egg that can be airborne and inhaled and there's a for the infection there's self-infection occurs by transferring by transferring infective eggs to the mouth with hands that have scratched the parietal, air, peri, parietal area. Next, there's the person-to-person -person transmission. It can only it can also occur through handling of contaminated clothes or bed bed lines. And tuberculosis may also be acquired through surface in the environment that are contaminated with pinworm eggs. For example, the carpet or curtains. In the male and the female mate, the artery of the female become filtered with the eggs. The, the gravid female then, then migrate down the ingestive tract to the anus, and from there they make regular noc noc nocturnal migration out of the, out of the anus to the perineal area where air can contact similar stimulate them to lay their eggs before retreating back into the rectum. Every, eventually, the female will die. Their bodies dis, distinct, distinguish to relatively to release any remaining eggs. And then eggs mature in an oxygenated moisture environment and are uh, infectious. Three to four hours later, these eggs, which are cleaner and measured 55 microliter by, by 30 microliter, micrometer, and occasionally the eggs hatch in the anal area itself. The, morning, the, mo the resulting L1 larvae become fully infective, crawling back through the anus then migrating up the intestine to the occasion. Ritual infection or the migration of newly hatched larvae from the anal skin, become, anal skin back into the rectum can occur, but the frequency with this are happen, with this which happens is unknown. And then there's man-to-man -man and auto-infection auto and auto trans, uh, uh, and uh, very common. Some main points, key points. So human being is the only host, which is the definitive host, and there's no intermediate host involved. There are three modes for the transmission, for the egg, for the egg infection stage, and there are three modes. First is a hand to mouse, so it's a so you can say it's a fecal oral contamination. This is easy to understand. And next, there's inhalation. Eggs are light and can float and then be inhaled, trapped by a muc mucous membrane, then swallowed. Reinfection. And the eggs hatch and larvae crawl back through anus. So there are several, several ways to. Um, Several ways for the disease to transmit. Key point: location. So the intestines from stomach to anus, and it's most common in ileum cilium region. And there's a short time span. The female die after oviposition, and males die after co uh, covulation. Females lay eggs in the perianal peri air region of the host. Eggs takes around six hours to be to get matured and become the infective stage. Clinical presentation so it's always always asymptomatic until it's until there's the pruritus ani, which means unexplainable uh, unexplainable smile. And love, and this picture is talking about that. And it's a uh, irritability, bad, 
bedwetting, insomnia, um, perinatal rash, risk of secondary infection, but vagina discharge may be seen in appendix. Appendicitis. This is a clinical presentation. And rare cases of aberrant migration to four options, including tubes, ovaries, peritoneum, most of them are sym symptomless cases. Pathogenesis and uh, symptomas. It stands for the presentation presentation from the from the from the each group and most enterobiosis parasite patients are asymptomatic and really professional serious lesions most cases the worst symptom and the most common complaints are anal perianal and veg veg vegetable introduction intestinal itching and secondary infection uh, so the so some of the key points. So female migrates out of the anus at night to become a good boy, good lay eggs. And second, they cause small breaks in skin, which are in in in, in invaded by bacteria. And then there's host secret scratch area, resulting in more become more breaks in skin and more bacterial infection and more itching. And larvae may also invade, invade the uterus, vagina, vulva, and uh, they can cause itching around those options as well. And uh, the infection of the infection of pinworm is rarely rarely fatal. The worms do attach to the mucosa resulting in ulceration and we can learn to secondary bacterial infection which can be fatal. So we need to wait and see. And worms occasionally penetrate the sub, sub mucosa leading to that death. And the worms may also wander up through the vagina to uterus up or we and the large in peritoneum because they can cause peritonitis and the gran granulomas around the worm. This is the picture of the colon colonoscopy and uh, there's no enterobious infection and the pink worm looks nice. This is a colonoscopy, and the pinworm. You can see the size. It's uh, it reveals the area of the mucosa, and you can see the pinworm is in the shape of a S. It's in white color, and uh, and uh, with this you can. This is a feature of this pinworm. Usually at night the. Usually at night, if the kids were were very loud and they wake up sometimes and then cry, you may want to check their pants. And uh, because at night when people are sleeping, the peri 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 area were cleaned, and the uh, pinworm may sometimes crawl out uh, crawl out from the anus when kids are sleep, sleeping. And this is a two-year-old girl presented with a two-day history of intensely scraping her butt bottoms. On examination of the perianal area, pinworms were discovered. Ectopic par parasitisms. And it may happen to cause you you uh urogenital urogenital infl inflammations or even the pelvic cavity can be involved occasionally. The inflammation diseases happens happened in these organs may result serious effect, and the damage of 
urogenital systems and the pelvic, pelvic cavity. So the female is uh, more severe than the male. Clinical, so how to do, make the diagnosis? You need to ask for the patient history and uh, you may have the clinical suspicion first. And then the tools you can use for the identification is the scotch tape method. And uh, use the scotch tape, you can stick it to the bottom of the buttocks of the kit and then take it back and then use the microscope to check under on the on the on, on the um on on the plate to observe whether there's a there's a egg in 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 the feces. So you want to find the eggs. This is a this is a gold stand gold standard, and um, in the morning, peri perino self um solo 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 tape prep. And the fingernail scraping is really also okay to find to find the X. And this is a picture showing the X under the microscope. And the adult female in peri perineum. And uh, this is less commonly found. So for diagnosis. So diagnose, diagnosis is made by finding the adult worm or finding the parasite worm. X in the perineal area, particularly at night. And there are, there are two preferred techniques. So you, first, you can use a scotch tape te technique. And uh, every morning, pat the area around the anus with a piece of scotch tape. And then tape, place, and tape the tape on microscope slides with a drop of acetone. And then you can examine slides for slides for X. So flashlight techniques shine a flashlight on the anus air during the middle of the night. And you can see the adult female crawling out to lay eggs. And a, di a negative test for five consecutive membrane memories effectively rule out the diagnosis. So, um, stool specimens are rarely diagnostic and are not in indicated. This is a picture showing scotch tape te technique. It's very easy to understand. The, this kid is crawling on, on the on floor and the, the you or ask the daughter to stick the scotch tape to the buttocks and then take it back. So this can prevent the little bugs to climb to get inside our home. This is uh, another one. This is the flashlight technique. And you can see pinworms on the perineal skin. There are many kids. And okay, so how, how, to treat, how to do the treatment? You want to kill the worm first. There's abandazo and mebendazo. They, they are very common. And parental marrow, which we don't go there and live. And both high, both of them are highly effective. And it's, if transmission is stopped, and we must treat entire family and repeat after 10 days. This is, a, uh, this is how you can use a car to go to Disneyland. Prevention, so you want to put the prevention in the first, since the lifespan is less than two months and the major problem is reinfection. And uh, so you want to pay attention to personal hygiene and eating habits. For example, you want to trim the fingernails and always, always uh, wash the hands and thumb and then they can the hands can touch bed netting, bed bedding, tower, social sh should be uh, should be appreciated that. Worldwide, you can see there are many people infection get infection, 
and even if it is an urban disease, it's a di urban disease of children in crowded environment, schools, daycare centers, kindergartens, and large families, etc. And uh, on and after uh, urban area, you can find more cases than in the rural area, and you can just uh, look at the children, how large they are, and adults may get get it from their children. So this is that's why that's one way to say the family, the, family, uh, the the two way get out of the way, and we can we can do something with that. And the epidemiology is there, so it has a very short lifespan. Female dies after oviposition and males die after op ovulation. Other infection and reinfection are two we are going to talk about. And more common industrialized countries due to increase in bedding, um, draperies, etc. in in the in the house. And they want to get from and because of the low pathology, very little effect to irradiate this species.